Greeting fellow adventurers, I'm the man in the hat, Adam Zern, and welcome to Uncharted Lancaster Headquarters, which may or may not just be an unfinished corner of my basement. Now, thank you for being here, and let me start with a simple question. A raise of the hands will suffice. How many of you have heard of Uncharted Lancaster before? Go ahead, put your hands up. No, seriously, I, I can see you through the camera including that guy right there who's picking his nose. Yeah, I, you didn't think I could see you, but I did. All right, let me count those hands up here. One, eight, five, five, seven, eight, nine, ten, nine, eight, 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 20. All right, so that means none of you. None of you have ever heard of Uncharted Lancaster before, and that's okay. So, what is Uncharted Lancaster? That's something to be taken lightly. No one knows its secrets. It's like nothing you've ever gone after before. Pardon Marcus Brody there. I think he's being a bit melodramatic. Uncharted Lancaster is two things. One, there's the history side where I like to highlight fascinating pieces of history that people might not know here in the Lancaster area. So, for example, did you know that on September 27th, 1777, Lancaster was the capital of the nation for one day one whole day uh as the continental congress was fleeing philadelphia they met for the day in lancaster before moving to york on the other side of the susquehanna river for nine months oh some of you knew that okay well good very good how about this though did you know that columbia missed out on being the nation's capital by one vote before it was called the town of Columbia, uh, it was known as Wright's Ferry, named after John Wright, who you could argue is Lancaster's original and possibly most important founding father. They changed the name of Wright's Ferry to Columbia in their bid to become the nation's capital. Can you imagine that? Just think about that. Just a few miles away, instead of on the banks of the Potomac, Washington, uh, or as it would have been called Columbia, perhaps Columbia, D.C., uh, right here on the banks of the Susquehanna. Now, opposite the history is the adventure side of Uncharted Lancaster. I'm looking for someone to share in an adventure. Like Gandalf, I'm always looking for someone to share in one of my adventures. So as an incentive for visiting some of these historic locations, I've hidden treasure at the end. And if you are brave enough and smart enough to follow the clues and solve the riddles, you can claim some of that treasure for yourself. So what kind of treasure can you expect to find while on an uncharted Lancaster adventure? It was full of rubies and, and emeralds and diamonds. Diamonds. Well, yes. Sometimes you can find diamonds. Or sapphires. And other times, even some pirate booty here like this golden coin. But actually, a lot of it is 3D printed items that I've made right here in my basement. Uh, such as this copper bones. And this Aztec golden coin from the Pirates of the Caribbean. And ones that I've just designed myself, like this covered bridge for Colemanville. And of course, the infamous Bosman hollow coin there. I can see you right through the, the arch of the tunnel. So lots of great things. And so I want to take a few minutes and talk to you about 3D printing. 3D printing feels so modern that it's easy to forget that the technology was invented in the 1980s. Perhaps even sprung from the mind of Dr. Emmett Brown. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Doc. Uh, are you telling me that you built a time machine? Out of a DeLorean? The way I see it, if you're going to build a time machine into a car, why not do it with some style? Like the DeLorean time machine, 3D printers were ahead of their time. The devices were wildly expensive, and the computers needed to run them woefully underpowered. It wasn't until the early 2000s when the patent expired that the cost of the printers began to plummet, and everyday affordable personal computers became powerful enough to, to power the machines. Regardless of brand, all 3D printers basically work the same. The computer software takes a 3D design object, typically a CAD file, and slices it into thin layers. Uh, it can be anywhere from 75 to 100 layers per inch thick. And then the printer then extrudes a filament, 
something like this, often plastic, and it builds and prints each layer one at a time, each on top of each other until the final object is, is printed. Print times can take anywhere from a few minutes upwards of several days, depending on the complexity and the size of the overall object. Commercial models are even capable of printing concrete, metal, and even human tissue. The only limitations on what you can print are simply your imagination and the size of your printer. If you were wondering what you should ask Santa for Christmas this year, Santa! Oh my God! I would highly recommend putting a 3D printer on your list. So, how do you participate in an Uncharted Lancaster adventure? Simple. On the web, search Uncharted Lancaster Adventures or simply go to the website unchartedlancaster.com and click on the adventures tab. From there, you'll find a dozen different adventures to choose from. One of the questions I often get asked is which adventure is my favorite? And right now that would have to be the Tunnels of Enola adventure. This epic four mile hike takes you between Shanks Ferry and Safe Harbor as you scramble up and down steep banks to explore not one, not two, but five different tunnels. Now, between 1903 and 1906, the railroad built the Enola low grade, and part of that process meant leveling mountains and, and raising valleys. And along the way, they created these tunnels to allow the local streams and creeks to flow through on their way to the Susquehanna. And on this adventure, you get to explore five of them. As you go through, you're trying to solve the riddles and clues to unlock the location of the hidden treasure. Break out that paper and pencil, boys and girls, because it's time for a pop quiz. What happens when an unstoppable force meets an unmovable object? Spoiler alert, nothing good. That's exactly what happened to William Neway in 1981 when his 82 car freight train collided with a three ton boulder right there on the Enola low grade. And this is just one of the stops on the Tunnels of Enola adventure. And I'm gonna show you exactly where you can find the wreckage and tell you exactly where that accident was. It was December 23rd, 1981. And despite being only a few minutes past five o'clock, the sun had already set below the horizon for 15 minutes. The 82 car laden Conrail owned train was en route to Morrisville in Bucks County, carrying a heavy load of paper, sand and petroleum byproducts. What the engineer didn't know was earlier that day, a three-ton boulder had broken free from the sh sheer cliffs along the Susquehanna and landed squarely upon the tracks, blocking both lanes. Niwe would later estimate the rock was as long as the engine and three feet high. When the 27-year-old engineer finally did see the giant monolith after rounding a curve, the train was only 30 yards away. Niwe immediately applied the emergency brakes, but a train of this mass needs at least 100 yards to stop. Seeing that a collision was imminent, the four-man crew ran for the rear of the cab to jump out. Only three made it. At approximately 5.11 p.m., locomotive CR-6267 and CR-6253 collided with a chunk of the mountain going 30 miles an hour. The impact folded the two engines and the next 13 cars like the accordion made of paper. This is just a taste of the things you'll learn and the experiences you'll have while on an uncharted Lancaster adventure. Thank you for joining me. My name is Adam Zern with Uncharted Lancaster. You can learn more at www.unchartedlancaster.com. And while you're on your own adventure, I hope you find some Fortune and glory, kid. Fortune and glory. Thank you and goodbye.